Okay, so we're back. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, we're back. Uh, and um, I just want to say a couple things. Uh, first, uh, for pr this is a procedural meeting tonight um, in regards to 555. So there's no public comment tonight, uh, but everybody's welcome to listen in. Um, and at this point, we have town council with us. And what I would like to do is to um, have town council uh, Attorney Winters here uh, has a few things that he would like to discuss uh, with the applicant. So I will turn it over to him. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and the, the people here in the room, and for those of you uh, participating remotely. My name is Brian Winter. I'm an attorney at East Hallerman and Costa, and we serve as town council. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I just confirm um, if it's possible that we have all the board members and um, representatives of the applicant's team? Are they all? Connected and online, and I see names, but I just want to make sure everyone can hear and, and is available. Okay. Um, do you want me to go through? I can go through all, all yeah, of just the to board members. Just we move from okay. executive back into public. I just want to make sure everyone Certainly. is supposed to be here. Okay. Is here. Uh, Karen. Here. Okay. Scott. Here. Okay. Jason. Here. Okay. Josh. Hi. I am here. And David, the one here. And uh, the applicant, I believe we have a few people uh, here from <clears throat> from the applicant. I believe I see Peter. It's Peter Bemis. I'm here. Thank you. And um, I'm Michael Miller, representing also. CRG. Michael, okay. And uh, Chip Nyland. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for indulging me with that, Mr. Chairman. So, as you alluded to earlier, um, there were some procedural issues that we wanted to address tonight. And the first one, and Attorney Nyland, I hope you can hear me clearly with my mask on and remotely there, but uh, this question is uh, by and large directed towards you, and I'm hoping you can respond. But one of the sort of fundamental issues or jurisdictional issues that uh, we identified when looking at the, the paperwork for this evening is that the, the original application um, identified CRG Integrated Real Estate Solutions as the applicant. The stormwater and land disturbance permit was issued to CRG Integrated Real Estate, uh, yeah, Real estate Solutions. Um, and there's an address uh, given for Pennsylvania. Um, the materials that we received, however, for this evening uh, were submitted on behalf of New Hopping Brook Trust. Um, and then the last sort of piece of that is that uh, you know through some of the you know uh, diligence that we've done, uh, my office that is, uh, we have not been able to identify that CRG Integrated Real Estate Solutions is a business entity certified and licensed to do business in Massachusetts. And what I mean by that is we check the Secretary of the Commonwealth's website and don't see any form of registration or certificate filed with the Secretary of the Commonwealth indicating that they're a Massachusetts business entity or an entity uh, licensed to do business in Massachusetts. So we have a question about, you know, who is in front of the board uh, and who holds the permit and who we're essentially uh, doing business with here this evening. So Attorney Nyland, I'm hoping uh, you and your team can shed some light on that because before the board moves forward, uh, I think it's very critical for us to understand, uh, you know, who the permit was issued to, whether or not they're now licensed and, and before us this evening, uh, licensed to do business in Massachusetts, or if it's a, a different ent entity pursuing this. And if it is CRG, um, to confirm that uh, they're a proper applicant before the board. So those touch upon some pretty fundamental jurisdictional concerns that I might have. Um, and we'd just like to you know, clear that up on the record and find out what the answers to those questions are and see if we can um, bring that to a resolution before we proceed on on the other matters before us. So, uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, that's that's my concern, um, and I've addressed it to Attorney Nyland, so maybe this would be an opportunity for them to respond. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Brian. This issue was uh, raised a, a, a bit ago, and let me just explain. CRG. Uh, which was the uh, applicant initially, 
um, has been succeeded by CRG Acquisition LLC, which is an LLC which is registered in the Commonwealth in the Secretary of State's office. When the board filed its request for relief with the Superior Court, I answered, um, which your firm should have a copy of, and identified CRG Acquisition LLC as a successor to the, uh, the original applicant. And so CRG Acquisition LLC is uh, authorized to go forward and to conduct business in the Commonwealth. With respect to this evening, when we, when we looked at the bylaw and at the permit, it was very clear that it was the site contractor who was the one who was supposed to be submitting the sequence plan to the planning board. So we've identified, and uh, Peter Bemis has done that with, with uh, First Colony, on behalf of CRG Ac uh, Acquisition LLC, as well as the owner of the property. So that's the, the way that we read it is that it's for the site contractor to submit the document according to the uh, permit that was issued on March 20th. So we have a, an owner that's uh, entitled to do business in the, in the Commonwealth. We've got an applicant that's entitled to do business in the Commonwealth. And we also have the, um, the site contractor who's represented as well. And Peter Bemis is here to answer any of those questions. So I hope that puts that to bed. Um, you're welcome to take a look at the, I don't know if you can access the Secretary of State tonight or you can take a look tomorrow, but um, it, it has, it is a registered LLC. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a follow-up question? Absolutely. So uh, Chip, you've just identified, um, you know, a third entity now um, have you submitted or do you intend to submit any paperwork to the board to, um, you know, correct the record or update the record to reflect that um, CRG Acquisitions LLC is the successor and now holder of the permit and is uh, either in part or in whole the, uh, the applicant before the board? Because the paperwork I have doesn't carry that name on any of the documents. Well, I... Um, or it does direct me to it if I've just missed it, but I, I didn't see that name identified anywhere. So Mr. Chairman, through you to uh, council, uh, again, I looked at the permit, Brian, and I looked to see whether or not there was a requirement for us to identify a successor within the permit. I, if you'd like me to do that, I certainly can, but I didn't, since, since the the permit was running to CRG and we've got the acquisitions following in its place, a successor. Um, I didn't see anything in the permit that required me to formally notify the planning board. I can certainly do that if that would make you and the board feel more uh, comfortable. But, you know, most permits actually recite a provision that says that, you know, if, if there's going to be a, a new owner then you know to notify the board and I, I didn't I didn't see that I may I may have um, gone gone by it but I, I specifically looked for that Brian um, when I was answering the um, when I was answering the town's complaint and didn't see one and, and to the chair I don't mean to belabor the issue but uh, you know I agree with attorney Nyland that typically that might be a condition of a permit that the board get notified um, so that you know, if we ever have to look at the file or look at the site, we know which entity we're now dealing with if it's changed hands. But in this case, it's particularly relevant because now we have an entity, I guess, ERG Acquisitions LLC, that's actually pursuing this, but that entity isn't reflected on any of the paper. So now we have yet a third party that I guess we're now dealing with. So it's, it's I think, pretty relevant to clear that up on the record uh, because these conditions. Um, that the applicant are seeking to fulfill tonight, um, they're now doing that through yet another business entity. So um, I would be inclined to get that cleared up on the record and we can you know, verify, I'm sure it's easy enough to do, um, but I think we need to straighten that out. 
Well, Mr. Chairman, through you, I will certainly put a letter into the board tomorrow and indicate that CRG Acquisition LLC has succeeded to uh, CRG, the, um, the original applicant, so that that will be cleared up. And again, through the chair, and that the materials that were submitted for this evening that you're asking the board to consider, that those are submitted on behalf of New Housing Group Trust and CRG Acquisitions LLC. Correct. By the site contractor, yes. Circle is Okay, well, we'll look for that. Um, so when that's, assuming that that can be cleared up and will be cleared up, hopefully that, um, that'll that be resolved. Um, uh, but unless and until it is, uh, I think it's an open issue. Uh, I assume it'll be closed shortly. I take Attorney Nyland at his word in good faith, so hopefully that issue will be uh, addressed uh, you know, in forthcoming. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, if you want, if you're inclined for the board to move on to um, the other procedural issue, which is, um, you know, you have a great deal of materials that were submitted and even some that were submitted late that I believe were just received today, um, and how the board wants to process that. Um, so, uh, as you and I have discussed uh, previously, um, it's often the case that boards like to, um, you know, when there isn't, uh, an in-house technical team capable of, of reviewing all this to send it out, uh, charge that person, fund that person or that, that organization with reviewing those things um, and re to receive those comments so that the board can be uh, educated enough to have a substantive conversation with the applicant. Uh, so that may be the next procedural step that you want to consider and discuss with the applicant um, uh, unless you feel that the board is capable of of evaluating you know, what you have in front of you and the materials that just came in late today. But if you feel otherwise, then that might be the next step. So, okay. And to discuss the terms of, of that arrangement. What okay. It would be. All right. Okay. Um, at this point, we'd like to uh, have a peer review. Um, and we're looking for somewhere in the neighborhood, I guess, 6,000 to have this. Uh, the SWIFT and everything done by CMG <clears throat> in regards to this application that's just been handed to us. And I guess some of the material came in today, so we have not had a chance to review this too. Also, uh, for future reference, uh, this planning board doesn't uh, speak on stuff at uh, board meetings that's from packs that they receive the day of. Uh, we generally have about a, a week policy to where we need information at least a week in advance to thoroughly look at it. <clears throat> so what we would like is uh, to have this peer reviewed and uh, looking for the applicant for uh, $6,000 to, um, to peer review this through CMG. Would somebody like to uh, speak from the company in regards to that? Well, um, am I am I am I muted or I'm still okay? Yeah. No, you're okay. Yes. So, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, this is Chip Nyland. We we agreed with um, council last week that we would submit the application on or before October 22nd, uh, which was a week ago. We submitted the material to you, including the plans that showed exactly where the work was going to take place. We submitted what's called a SWIP, which I'm sure you've seen, which is um, take, shows the erosion controls and other work that's taking place. There was a sequence that was involved. What you received today was just a bar that took the what was in the it was a graph that took what was in the application that you saw last week and just put it on a spreadsheet so that you could see when the work was going to take place. But like anything else, what we're going to do first is to do the erosion controls, have a meeting with the planning board staff to explain what the purposes are, then to do the tree cutting, 
than to do the grubbing and the stumping and to go forward. All, all of that, I don't, I don't want the board to think that what you received today was of just a, uh, the project at a first blush. We were very careful to submit most of that work um, last week. And we're prepared to talk about that. I think for purposes of the peer review, which may be appropriate for the construction work, um, I certainly we wouldn't be opposed to that at all. But I think the tree cutting really isn't anything as we've got a very flat area out there. I'm not sure that the tree cutting is something that would require peer review. So we would we would ask that you would consider allowing the tree cutting to continue or to be resumed, I should say, uh, because it's been off for a month. And uh, while while you perform peer review on the remaining material, remaining material, because as I said, all of that was in front of you um, a week ago, Mr. Chairman. Okay, but I think we'd still like this peer reviewed all this material <clears throat> that we've just received in the last week. <clears throat> Chairman, if I just may offer, I mean, the question is, you know, is the board in a position and is the board's preference to have it here with you? And can you um, review and act on the merits of the submission in the absence of that? So it's really up to the, the board's discretion, what the board needs in order to move forward. So, you know, the applicant, you can talk about it and discuss it with your membership. Um, the applicant has stated their position that he doesn't feel it necessarily rises to that level, but it's not the applicant's expertise and comfort level, it's the board. Uh, and the board's ultimately going to vote on this, and you need to have the knowledge and expertise sufficient to uh, enable you to make a considered decision. So that's, that's the question. Yeah, and, and respectfully, Attorney Nyland, uh, I just don't feel like we have that on the board a full you know grasp of you know what will be the effects to the land um, with all the tree removal and the stump removal um, and you know I'll throw it out to other board members maybe they feel differently but for me I 100% would definitely like a peer review uh, Scott do you have anything to add to that I agree with Josh I mean I, I flipped through this I, I did the best I could with it it's, it's not my it's not my area of expertise, so I would 100% um, like to continue as well. Okay. Uh, Jason? Yeah, um, Chairman Thorne, I, I completely agree. Uh, should go through peer review. A lot of damage can be done cutting the tree. So uh, all the equipment and everything like that. So it, I, I agree 100%. Okay. And uh, Karen? I absolutely agree with my board members. I have taken uh, a long look at this and uh, it is highly technical and this is not my professional area. So I would like to defer to someone who uh, does this for uh, a living and I would like to hear what their report is on it because I'm sure that there is something that I would miss uh, reading. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And, uh, anything else? No, I mean, I think it would, Okay. Now I think it's it I would say that, you know, you know, I would put it back to Attorney Nyland and CRG Acquisitions LLC. Um, you know, will you accept that? Would you accept that a peer review by CMG to the tune of something like $6,000? Well, uh, this is Chip Nyland, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I. I, 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 we certainly don't quarrel as I indicated. I was just trying to distinguish portions of the peer review, but no, we, we don't um, we, we don't quarrel. We agree with it, with Attorney Winner that it's within your discretion to request that if it makes the board feel more comfortable. I think we, we, we just would like to make sure that that's done in an expedient way. Is that something that could be conducted, Mr. Chairman, by the next meeting? I've just touched base with um, Dave Weiss from CMG this afternoon. Uh, 
I'm sorry. So, so you, you have picked a peer reviewer, Mr. Chairman? Yes, yes. Uh, did you hear Karen saying that uh, he, she has reached out to him So uh, this afternoon? So. <clears throat> And when do you when do you meet again, Mr. Chairman? We meet again on the twelfth, I believe, of November, which is to meet uh, with you. With you with to this, <laughs> yes. <clears throat> but I think that we have to be clear that we cannot speak for someone else's calendar. We're going to have to talk to them and see what their calendar is. Yeah. No, and I, I was I was just trying to get figure out, I thought you met monthly and that we would be talking about sometime in the beginning of December. I, I think November 12th is probably early, but I would I would just hope that we could do it to, for the following meeting. Okay, I think that's December 3rd, December, correct me if I'm wrong, no, 5th, right? Let's do a calendar here. We do have a meeting scheduled on uh, December 3rd, which is the only thing I see on it right now is 1569 Washington Street. Is that correct? Uh, do you have a petition for uh, 45 Washington Street that I was trying to schedule as well? Okay. And, and does this mean that this would be in lieu of a meeting on the 12th of November? Is that what the applicant is suggesting? That we would not meet on the 12th, we would meet a month later? So. Well, I'm sorry, through you, Mr. Chairman. If yes. the peer review can be conducted within that time period, we're, we're ready, willing, and able to meet on the 12th. I wasn't sure what the timing was as staff has just spoken to them. So if, if it could be the 12th, that would be, that we would clearly be supportive of that. I don't even see how that's going to be possible because that would mean they would they would have to get it done, write us a report and have it to us by the fifth, which is an incredibly fast turnaround, as you know, for any company that is already has things on their calendar. And it seems to me like we're going to get to the 12th and be dissatisfied that we're not ready. So I, I I just don't want to promise what I think looks like a very tight schedule. I agree, Karen. Yeah. So if we're talking about moving it out, then why wouldn't we talk about December 17th? Okay. That would be technically a month from the meeting that we had already had scheduled for our next meeting date. And that works for everybody. December seventeenth. Like I, Scott, okay with that? And Jason. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah, that's that's fine for me. Okay. So that means that we're. We're moving the meeting that's going to be on uh, the, the 12th of November. No. 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 No, we, okay. we would probably have to open that meeting and continue no. it, wouldn't we? Separate track. Separate track. Okay. So you want to do that separate. So that would be track. This would be separate from the meeting on that. Okay. So we'll still meet on right. that. Okay. Okay. Right. But about then, different okay. things. <laughs> In regards to 555. Okay. So we'll still meet on the 12th. And in regards to this, we're going to move this to December 17th. Okay. Okay. All right. I think at this point, unless are there any board members that have any other questions? Well, we still need to. Uh, so you've agreed to that in regards to uh, uh, funding uh, this? Yeah, yes. yes, Mr. Okay. Yes, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Okay. I didn't communicate that. I apologize, but I thought that I okay. had said that earlier. Oh, that's fine. I just wanted to just to make sure that that was what we were discussing. And uh, okay, so you agree to a. Uh, just for clarification, if um, I solicit a scope, um, who uh, would 
like to review it in terms of its acceptability on on your side from from the applicant side yeah oh, okay yeah i i would request that you send that to peter bemis he's the one who prepared the document i think he's the most comfortable with and certainly um knows what's in there and, and could answer any questions and and i think it we would appreciate that if if uh, he could take a look at that scope and i'm assuming that uh, uh, so chapter 4453g gives you an opportunity to review the selection um i've simply gone back to the peer reviewer the same peer reviewer who worked on this project for the town originally and i'm assuming that that selection would be okay yes that's all I didn't say anything yet, but I, I was grateful that you went there, Karen, because I think that, that they can streamline this process. And that the only thing I'm disappointed in is we're out to December 17th. And, um, and I was trying to get some things completed before we were into any hard winter here. So, so I, I'm in full agreement with the 53G funding and selecting CMG, but I, I, I really would have hoped to have selected that first meeting in December versus the second. That's, that's the only thing that I would ask you to reconsider. Okay, I, I think we have a lot already scheduled for that meeting, unfortunately. Oh, on the uh, third? Okay, I, I, I did not hear that, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's, oh, that's all right, I just I think unfortunately we have a lot uh, scheduled <clears throat> for that night, so I apologize. <clears throat> okay, I don't know if there's anything else that you wanted to... Uh, I have nothing further, Mr. Chair, thanks, excuse me. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, so I think the next procedural step would be to um, get it on the calendar. It's not a public hearing, so you don't have to vote to continue it through the date. I'm certain, but you're welcome to. Um, for the 17th and 7th, or whatever your preference might be. Okay, so there's no vote required other than. No, it's a regular meeting okay. of the board, so okay. it's not a public hearing. Um, okay. So you don't have to vote to continue it through the date. I'm certain. But again, there's no harm. Okay. Well, with that, would somebody like to make a motion to that effect to just that we're going to discuss this next on December 17th, if somebody would like to make a motion to that effect? I'll make a motion uh, that we'll discuss this on December 17th. Okay. Josh has made a motion. Do I have a second? Jason, second. Okay. Jason, second that. All in favor, I guess, starting with Jason. Aye. Scott. Aye. All right, Karen. Aye. All right. Aye. Josh, all right. Aye. David, aye. Okay. That's it. Okay. Great. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, at this point, if somebody would like to make a motion, uh, other than if there's anything other, other make a motion. Is there anything else that you'd like to discuss or, or your? Um, I think I'm good. So uh, I will go ahead and schedule 45. Um, Washington Street for December 3rd. And also the zoning board has asked that you weigh in on a petition for 799 Washington. They're scheduled out till November 18th. So I will get you that filing as soon as I can and try to put some comments on for general business for November 12th so that you can get it back to the zoning board. Okay. For 799 Washington Street, okay. Which is, the, I'm sorry, which is the Gulf Station downtown. Oh, okay. okay, thanks. Okay, all right. Uh, any of the board members have anything? No, I'm going to make a motion right now to adjourn the meeting. Okay. <laughs> uh, Josh has made a motion to adjourn the meeting. Do I have a second? Jason, second. Okay, Jason seconded. Uh, Scott? Aye. You, all right, Jason? Aye. Karen? Hi. All right, Josh. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone that uh, attended the meeting. We appreciate uh, your attendance. And uh, again, I'm sorry for the uh, for the time that we were gone. But thank you, everybody. For thank you for your thank time, you. Mr. Chairman and members. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Good night.